Hello, this is Pastor Laura Cavendish, and I'm coming to you from my office at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Asheville, Ohio, and we are sharing a devotion series about the Lord's Prayer, and we have reached day six in, in our series, and we have been in this journey of the first week looking at our Father in Heaven, hallowed be your name. And I'm going to read you today's devotion. And then I also would like to give us a review about um, what the small catechism says about that intro and first petition. So some things to add today. So. God is called by many names in the Old Testament, but they are largely descriptive rather than personal. Marvelous, strong one of Jacob, he of the mountain, mighty one, rock, refuge, king. It is interesting to read through the Old Testament and make note of the many adjectives, nouns, and images used to attempt to name that which the human mind cannot fully grasp. Given the limits of human understanding, if God does not disclose God's name, it will not be known. According to the book of Exodus, God did exactly that, disclosed God's name to Moses before sending him to Egypt to liberate the Hebrew slaves from captivity. When Moses asked God what to tell the Hebrews when they asked who sent him to them, God replied, Yahweh, which can be translated as I am who I am, or I am what I am, or I will be what I will be, or simply I am. And you can go to Exodus 3, 13 through 15 to look at that. And it is interesting in the Hebrew, you know, when you say, well, which one is it? Is it I am who I am or I am what I am or I will be what I will be? No, it's all of those things um, meant by that translation. It is a strange name, hardly a name at all, but one that should evoke a sense of healthy fear. It declares that God is in a way that humans are not. And God should thus be taken with great seriousness. In ancient Israel, the name of God was considered so holy that it was not to be spoken or written. Instead of writing Yahweh, the writers of the Bible wrote only the four consonants in the name. Y-H-W-H. A sign to the reader that rather than pronounce the holy name, they should Read the word as either Adonai, Lord, or Elohim, God. The convention continues today. When you read your Bible and find Lord or God in all capital letters, it is a sign that the Hebrew text has Yahweh, representing Yahweh, the holy name of God. The Lord's Prayer is an invitation to ponder the sacred to wonder about I am, the mystery from which we came and to which we shall return. When God disclosed God's name to Moses, God spoke from a burning bush. As Moses approached the bush, he was told to take off his shoes because the ground on which he stood was holy ground. With reference to this event, the poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning wrote, Earth's crammed with heaven, and every common bush afire with God. But only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit around it and pluck blackberries. We, especially people of Christian faith, should all be running around barefoot. Sadly, too many of us have blackberries berry juice running down our chins. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Now here's
here's another biblical passage to support this. Isaiah 42, 8 says, I am the Lord, that is my name. And that was a capital L-O-R-D. So I am who I am, that is my name. And here's a quote for you. Um, this quote is from, let's see who, from Amy Jill Levine and her book, The Misunderstood Jew. I believe she was referring to Jesus at that point. The problem with the Lord's Prayer is neither in its content nor its historicity, but its familiarity. Many congregants don't actually think of the meaning of the words, or if they do, find only comfort rather than a challenge. In this case, I see it as a challenge to move beyond the limits of what I can imagine. How might a community of faith help promote a sense of the sacredness of God's name? These are our questions to ponder. A sense of the sacredness of God's name. It might seem strange to think that God's name is not God, it is Yahweh. Would it make any difference to you to think of God as Yahweh, I am, instead of as God or Lord? And then think about why that would be. You could explain that to someone else or write that in your journal today. I would think before I could consider that, I'd have to spend some time thinking about and putting in that word, I am. So there my phone is ringing and I hope they do not leave a message right now because then we'll have to chuck this video. So I don't want any personal knowledge shared. All right, we'll continue. The second commandment tells us that we are not to misuse the name of God. In what ways is the name of God commonly misused in our world? Well, I live with teenagers and they don't misuse God's name as much as the media they listen to. Um, so that is a common place. You know, it's just littered in to what's cool to say. So, um, it's um, something to think about. Here's our Psalm fragment. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O oh, I am, have not forsaken those who seek you. I, I inserted that. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O oh, great I am, have not forsaken those who seek you. And that's from Psalm 9, verse 10. It is in the Psalms that we get that all cap Lord and God a lot. It's good to think of that. Here's some things for your journal. Write a short meditation titled, Making God's Name Holy. And write a brief prayer to I am or I will be what I will be that expresses your sense of wonder at the relationship between Yahweh and humankind. And then think about that. Think from Elizabeth Barrett Browning. In your day-to-day -day life, do you often run around barefoot or more often with blackberry juice running down your chin? best to think through a day 
and its actual activities for recording there. Maybe refer to it. This is a barefoot moment, or this is a blackberry juice moment. <laughs> um, I'm going to maybe start thinking about that. Okay, and here's a prayer. Holy God, enable me to see that all ground is holy ground, for you are always with us. Amen. Amen. Okay, before we do Lord's Prayer, what we're going to do today, because we're at the end of that opening and first petition, before we move on to second petition, is to look at our catechism or to hear it again, because chances are we haven't read it for a long time. Some of us teach catechism, we read it frequently, um, but it's good if we're an adult. So when we look at the small catechism, it reminds us that the introduction is our Father in Heaven. And then we're used to the question, what does this mean? Some folks say, what is this? What is this? Okay. And here's, the, um, here's a, a modern translation of Luther's words. With these words, God wants to attract us so that we come to believe he is truly our Father and we are truly his children, in order that we may ask him boldly and with complete confidence, just as loving children ask their loving father. And then the first petition, and we've been reading about this, is hallowed be your name. And what does this mean? It is true that God's name is holy in itself. But we ask in this prayer that it may also become holy in and among us. And then the second question is, well, how does this come about? Whenever the word of God is taught clearly and purely, and we as God's children also live holy lives according to it. To this end, help us, dear Father in heaven. However, who Ever teaches and lives otherwise than the word of God teaches dishonors the name of God among us and then Luther goes on to say preserve us from this Heavenly Father so just a reminder there of your small catechism so let's say the Lord's Prayer together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. Go in peace this day. May Christ go with you. Tomorrow, for day seven, we start off into that second petition, which is your kingdom come. So, all right. It was nice to be with you. We'll see you tomorrow. I have lost, there it is, the remote to stop the video.